And the last thing I'll say in terms of a new fiscal framework and working with the other orders of government is we have to get elected too. Right? We go to the same people you do to get elected. So, you know, we're prepared to uh, be a partner. If you give us uh, the relationship uh, that, that we need, it will work for the citizens of Canada. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we are delving into the gathering of the big city mayors from across Canada. Now, the Big City Mayors Caucus is made up of mayors from 23 of Canada's largest urban centres. This meeting is kicking off the first day of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities AGM in downtown Toronto. This Big City Mayor Caucus is designed to foster discussion, debate, and most importantly, solutions representing millions of Canadians who rely on their big city leaders to address critical issues. Mayor Mike Savage of Halifax, Mayor Valerie Plant of Montreal, and Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKeevely of Toronto hosted a press conference moments after the first meeting of the Big City's Mayor Caucus in Toronto at this year's event. Now, during the press conference, Mayor Savage, who is the chair of the caucus, said that it was big city mayors, along with their city councils, who bear a critical role and responsibility in addressing the national challenges municipalities face. Uh, bonjour à tous. Je suis très heureux d'être ici avec vous, avec mes collègues. Uh, very happy to be here in Toronto. Uh, we're all proud in Canada of Toronto. Happy to be here with all of my colleagues, uh, uh, mayors and councillors and wardens and reeves from across the country, from mayors large and small. And thank you for coming today. My name is Mike Savage. I'm the mayor of Halifax, and I serve as the chair of the FCM uh, Big City Mayors Caucus. Delighted to be here with the mayor of Montreal, Valérie Plante, who serves as vice chair of the BCMC, along with Charlie Clark of Saskatoon. Uh, before I talk about municipal issues, uh, on behalf of the FCM Big City Mayor's Caucus, I'd like to acknowledge and thank all of the local leaders and the first responders who have been tackling the wildfires currently threatening Canadians and communities across Alberta and recently as far north as Hay River in the Northwest Territories. These are devastating events that are always met with unbelievable courage and resilience from the public and officials. And we thank everybody for their hard work and our hearts and our souls are with the people affected. Our Big City Mayors Caucus gathers the mayors of 23 of Canada's largest urban centres, representing millions of Canadians. The caucus is designed to drive discussion, debate, most importantly solutions to some of Canada's most pressing challenges. When we met last in Ottawa in December, we discussed with the Prime Minister and other members of Cabinet the very real pressures of Canada's housing crisis. The twin crises of homelessness and the needs for greater health, mental health supports for the most vulnerable, and the urgency of greater investments to combat the effects of climate change. Since then, there's been progress worth noting. The Federal Housing Accelerator Fund is now launching an important and potentially transformative tool that must be designed in an accessible way that doesn't create barriers for the municipalities that need it. The creation of that fund is a long-standing commitment from the federal government, and we're pleased to see it moving. Nobody knows better than Canada's big city mayors, though, how much there is left to do. The mayors and councils of Canada's largest urban centres have a critical role and responsibility in addressing the national challenges that I've mentioned. And yet the pace and intensity of those challenges are rapidly outpacing cities' ability to deliver timely, compassionate and effective solutions. Cities can lead. In fact, cities are leading. We all recognize that Toronto's Council had an important debate recently on changes that would allow more multi-unit dwellings to be built in areas that previously would not have been permitted. In my own city of Halifax, we've cleared serious permitting backlogs 
and we have many projects that are now approved for development that should allow for faster construction. In Montreal, the city has taken steps to create a mobile mediation and social response team to better respond compassionately to those individuals who are experiencing homelessness. In Calgary, the city has added city staff trained in conflict resolution and assisting vulnerable populations to its transit system as a response to a growing mental health crisis. These are actual on-the-ground solutions that cities must adapt as we respond to the needs of Canadians. Our discussions today include a meeting with the Federal Minister for Housing, Diversity and Inclusion, and we thank Minister Hussein for meeting with us this morning. We also discussed how cities are addressing the national mental health crisis. This afternoon, that discussion will continue, and we expect to focus on addressing chronic homelessness and city leadership in reaching Canada's climate goals. The role of local government has evolved significantly in recent decades. Cities, municipalities have had to take on new responsibilities with respect to health, social services, housing, and economic development. And long-standing city responsibilities like policing, waste management, water and wastewater services are becoming more and more complex due to the challenges linked to mental health, homelessness, and climate change. And while the post-pandemic recovery has led to growth in provincial and federal revenue through sales and income taxes, municipal revenue, namely property tax, have either stagnated or declined over the last five years when you adjust them for inflation. As FCM and the BCMC continue to foster leadership on Canada's national challenges, we are also emphasizing the need for a national conversation about moving beyond an outdated fiscal model so we can raise the quality of life for our citizens in our communities. Local realities of our municipalities are diverse, so we don't have a one-size-fits-all reform in mind just yet. But we know we need to have this national conversation. We know that it's important. And we want to have the federal government and provincial governments involved in the conversations. Montreal Mayor Plant also gave an opening remark at the press conference in French. Alors tout d'abord, bonjour à tous et, et à toutes. Merci à la mairesse de Toronto, mairesse Plant, de nous recevoir. And thank you, Mike. Merci beaucoup uh, à notre président uh, pour uh, les travaux qui sont menés par le caucus des maires des grandes villes de la Fédération canadienne des municipalités. Écoutez, uh, je serai brève. J'ai envie de vous dire que uh, une rencontre comme uh, celle du caucus uh, des, des grandes villes est importante parce que ça nous permet d'entendre les réalités. Et s'il y a une chose qui ressort uh, clairement, c'est que les villes en font toujours plus avec toujours moins et que ce soit au niveau de l'habitation, que ce soit au niveau de la transition écologique, que ce soit au niveau de soutenir les personnes les plus vulnérables, entre autres les itinérants, euh, gérer aussi l'espace public quand il y a des questions de, de santé mentale ou même de toxicomanie. Et malheureusement, on n'a pas les moyens euh, de nos ambitions. Et j'aime souvent rappeler, utiliser l'image que si la colline parlementaire, la Chambre des communes pouvait avoir une période de questions, comme nous les avons, nous les maires et les mairesses dans nos municipalités, où les gens viennent nous voir en détresse, les gens viennent nous voir en pleurs, les gens nous demandent de trouver des solutions, quel que soit le palier de gouvernement, quand ils n'arrivent pas à se loger puis qu'ils habitent dans la rue, quand ils n'arrivent pas à, mettre, à payer leur logement puis se demandent « c'est-tu le frigo qu'on va remplir » ou « payer les billes d'électricité » quand la population n'arrive pas non plus à pouvoir se déplacer et donc participer euh, à la vie économique. Alors, moi, ce que j'ai envie de vous dire, le message que je retiens principalement, il y a eu beaucoup de sujets d'aborder, mais c'est celui comme quoi les finances, le système de, de financement des municipalités est archaïque, il est dépassé, il est inadéquat, il est inacceptable. Et ça a été mentionné par M. le Président quand on sait que les villes dépendent à, à près de, essentiellement des taxes foncières, alors que le gouvernement fédéral, dans la dernière année, grâce à l'inflation, a eu une augmentation de 31 de ses revenus. Le gouvernement du Québec, c'est 11 alors que nous, nos revenus stagnent et même on nous invite à augmenter les taxes pendant que d'autres gouvernements les baissent. Alors là, à un moment donné, il y a une limite à quest ce qui peut être fait avec un cadre financier si restrictif et si déconnecté des réalités des municipalités et des villes. Alors, un des chantiers que le, 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 le caucus des maires des grandes villes va mettre de l'avant avec la Fédération 
canadienne des municipalités, c'est un chantier sur la fiscalité. Euh, réfléchir à des pistes de solutions pour sortir de cette dépendance qui est, euh, qui est toxique, je vais être bien honnête. C'est une, ce n'est pas, comme je disais, c'est vraiment pas acceptable. Et j'aime utiliser comme, euh, et on va leur devoir le faire avec le fédéral, absolument. Il faut le faire avec le gouvernement du Québec. Nous, à la Ville de Montréal, on a un chantier sur la fiscalité qui euh, va nous permettre, avec l'ensemble des villes et municipalités du Québec, de réfléchir à d'autres formes de financement. Mais à un moment donné, il faut cesser d'avoir un, un modèle, somme toute, encore une fois, tellement déconnecté de la réalité des citoyens et citoyennes. Alors, je remercie, je vous remercie tous et toutes pour votre attention. Et bien sûr, on va profiter des prochains jours pour parler de ces enjeux-là et faire valoir la voix, faire valoir la, la, la voix des municipalités qui en est au front. Quand il se passe une tragédie humaine, écologique ou autre, c'est le, les municipalités, ce sont les maires et les mairesses qui prenons la chaleur, qui cherchons des solutions. Et ce qu'on demande, c'est un vrai partenariat, puis une reconnaissance de notre statut, de notre rôle et une meilleure équité fiscale. Merci beaucoup. When asked about the recent federal budget and if municipalities across Canada were happy with what was in it and if it helped address some of the big city mayor's concerns, Mayor Savage said that while the current relationship is good with the federal government, things can always be better. We've had a, a good relationship with the federal government. As I mentioned, we've, had a, you know, we've met with the prime minister, we've met with a number of ministers and Uh, we would certainly not be our uh, argument that the feds haven't done anything to help cities. We've had a good relationship with the feds. Um, during COVID, they doubled the, what used to be called the gas tax, is now the community, Canada Community Building Fund. They supported us on transit. The issue is it's not enough. Um, municipalities already are responsible for 60% of infrastructure and collect 8 to 10% of the taxes. And while federal coffers and provincial coffers have been swelling in recent years since the recovery of COVID, increased population, um, municipalities haven't felt that. Property taxes don't uh, react the way that other orders of government's revenue does. Property tax, to begin with, in my view, is not a good way to collect money. It doesn't reflect people's ability to support uh, programs, but it is what we have and we're not gonna change it. So what we are saying is let's recognize the fact that There is a, a different kind of fiscal imbalance in the country than existed before, but it is a real one. And other orders of government have got money. The province of Nova Scotia's budget, I think, increased this year by $1.5 billion. The entire budget of Halifax, half of the province, is a billion dollars. So what we're saying is, especially on these areas where provincial and federal government have the responsibility, things like homelessness, for example, um, Let's have a new uh, a framework that recognizes the way that things have changed and the burden that's on municipalities, and we will be willing partners. So what that would be, this, uh, we can talk about that, but let's recognize, first of all, that it's real and that municipalities simply don't have the ability, and you saw that in a number of cities, property tax increases uh, this year. We don't like to increase tax, but we also want to maintain the services that our citizens need. So it's a challenge. So we think there's a fiscal uh, framework that's not working, Let's recognize it and let's take steps to fix it. Montreal Mayor Plant agreed with Mayor Savage in his assessment of the relationship with the federal government. Asking, though, if the federal government was doing enough to work with municipalities. A lot of effort's been done, but is it enough? The, the, the answer is no. Just like I would say the same thing about the provincial governments, because ultimately it comes, it comes back to us. I was saying in French earlier that I wish that the parliaments, both the provincial and the federal, will have a question period, like we all do mayors, when we have people coming to us, when there's like an ecological, like uh, there's a flooding or there's fire or there's something happening or people cannot find a, a roof on top of their head and they're coming and crying. Those are faces, those are real people. And to me, and when, why, why we want to tackle, no, it's more than tackle, we need to fix this broken system of fiscality because it puts us in this situation, cities where we're all always needing and asking for a little piece here and there. We're looking for a vision. We're looking for recognition that we are partners. That's what we do. We fix things. We find solutions. And we want to work in partnership instead of begging. So in Quebec, we, we are doing a big summit on fiscality because the system just doesn't work. So yes, more needs to be done. But instead of just saying, I want more money, We want to be part of the solution and be real partners. Let's stop the kind of more like a paternalist system that we're in. 
Deputy Mayor McCleave of Toronto didn't hold back with her disappointment with the federal government, though, and has called on residents of her city to call upon their MPs to voice their concerns for Toronto. As you know, in Toronto, I've been quite vocal about my disappointment in the federal government's budget this year. I appreciate that they put forward a budget that focuses on growth. But as Canada's largest municipality, we are still very much in economic recovery at the City of Toronto. And we still have costs coming out of the pandemic. I've been very vocal about that. Uh, we are looking at enormous pressure on our transit system because we continue to operate 90% of public transit service that we offered pre-pandemic, but we're still only having 70% of ridership. And being so highly dependent on the, the fare box is, is frankly, it's breaking our banks. Um, in addition, throughout the pandemic, we have added more than 3,000 beds to our shelter system. And that has a huge operating cost that is also crippling our municipality. So I've been very clear that the city of Toronto is still very much recovering from the impact of the pandemic, that we do need help. And we have taken that advocacy this week to the next level. We have launched a website, toronto.ca slash shortfall, where residents are encouraged to email their MPs and ask them to stand up for Toronto and to help us. So we've been very vocal in our disappointment with this budget. Uh, we do continue, like the other mayors, to advocate for a new fiscal framework for municipalities. And that has to recognize that the revenue tools we have don't grow with the economy, and theirs do. And uh, it is an unfairness that needs to be, uh, that needs to be solved. And uh, I'm glad that over the next few days, we'll all be talking about what that could look like. McKeevely believes that since the government has not come to the table to help Toronto, the city needs to start looking at alternative methods to find solutions to the growing issues of the city. It also means that if the work isn't done now, next year the city would be looking at an approximately $1.5 billion shortfall in its budget. So I'll add that in March, the city of Toronto had a report that was our long-term financial outlook. And it was quite depressing. Uh, $42 billion over the next 10 years is the gap that we need to fill in our budget. And in July, coming to council will be a report on revenue tools and on uh, both the ones that are available to us right now and those that are not in what they could generate for the City of Toronto. So for example, a percentage point of the HST, what could that mean for the City of Toronto? The revenue tools that are available to us right now though, um, most of them aren't big enough to fill that hole. Some of them have also become too complicated for us to use, and I'll give the example of that is the vehicle registration tax. The province took theirs away, so it would be very hard for us to bring one into the city of Toronto. We can't just piggyback onto theirs anymore. Um, other ones, such as road tolls, we've already been told no in the past. So this report in July will show all of those that are available to us, what those could generate, including a, a parking tax, for example, um, which ones are not available to us and which ones we should be as City of Toronto advocating for. So we'll have that information in July. And then again, Council will have to have a very important conversation about how we start to solve this very real problem that we have. Right now uh, in our City of Toronto budget, uh, between last year and this year, we're looking at about a $1.5 billion hole. Um, and again, that will be coming from reserves and then the reserves are gone. So uh, that is an important conversation we'll be having in July, and I'll, I'm happy to share that report with you. Mayor Savage says that cities can no longer shoulder the responsibility alone of addressing these issues, particularly the ones that aren't even in municipal jurisdiction. As I said, first of all, we're looking for a recognition that cities can no longer uh, shoulder responsibility for things that in many cases aren't even in our jurisdiction. We already are struggling to keep the roads uh, paved, to, to cut the grass and sports fields, to build the recreation centers and things that are very clearly in our responsibility. That's already a challenge when other orders of governments are increasing uh, their revenues and we really aren't. What's really troublesome is that we're now getting into a lot of areas that in the case of Halifax and some of the cities are not our responsibility but we're just not going to let people suffer on the streets. So we have paid for housing. Uh, transitional housing for people, even though homelessness is not our responsibility. Um, you know, people who have no place to go, they end up in our parks. Uh, and what are we going to do? Are we just going to forget that they're human beings? Or are we going to deal with them? And we, so we're trying to deal with people in a humane and uh, compassionate uh, way. And we're into things in a big way like climate change that people don't necessarily think of as a city. We'll take our responsibility. The city of Halifax raised taxes 
the last two years alone just for our climate action plan because we think it's the right thing to do for the planet and for the land that we, we share. But we, we just can't, we have a crisis on things like homelessness and mental health and opioids and all those things which are costing uh, money. And at the same time, we're getting a lower share of the tax revenue that comes with that. And that's just not something that can uh, continue. So we want to have the conversation with the feds, with the provincial government. We want to have it with indigenous uh, governments as well and say, you know, we can argue about jurisdiction, but let's define the problem and then figure out the solutions and who's going to come to the table. That's what I'd like to see. Deputy Mayor McLeaf says that everything needs to be on the table in working with both the provincial and federal governments. She went as far as to say that both the province and the federal government needs to possibly re-upload some of the costs that they've previously downloaded onto municipalities. I think everything's on the table right now. I think that is part of the discussion that we want to have. Uh, in the City of Toronto in particular, we've seen over the last several decades many things downloaded to our municipality. Uh, we have, uh, in our city specifically, we maintain two 400 series highways at enormous cost to our property tax uh, payers in the City of Toronto, and yet those highways are being used uh, by the GTA, and that's an unfairness that we have. There are many different examples of things in the city budget that should be paid for by the provincial government in particular, um, but also the federal government. So I think it's a combination of things that we need to look at. That includes uh, re-uploading some costs to the province, to the federal government, but it also does uh, cause us to have a look at revenue tools that grow with the economy and what those are. Property taxes do not grow with the economy. We increased property taxes in the city of Toronto by 7% this year. It is the biggest increase we've ever seen. To cover the shortfall that we have, you are looking at property taxes in the or increase in the order of 30, 40%. So um, it is just not sustainable. I think we need to have everything on the table to uh, go forward and have that very important conversation with both levels of government. Mayor Savage said that the federal government needs to help out more and municipalities from across Canada have shown in the past how they can be accountable with taxpayer dollars. Savage also adds that a better partnership needs to happen to help fix the issues municipalities are facing. So the, the obvious answer is we're open to any ideas. What we have seen is that there are mechanisms that make a difference. The gas tax, now the Canada Community Building Fund, direct to municipalities. There's accountability uh, on that. We saw with the Rapid Housing Initiative, money that goes to direct to municipalities. And in a medium-sized city like Halifax, that's going to house 180 people who otherwise simply would not have a place to go, working with partners in the not-for-profit sector, the private sector. So there's ways of getting money to municipal governments. We're not saying don't put any accountability on it. We're not, you know, we, what we are saying is these are definite problems. Let's find a mechanism that works for the federal government. Ideally, would work with the provincial partners uh, as well, and we'll be accountable for the solutions. Um, we're not just saying give it to us, you know, without any ex expectation, but we've shown that municipal governments are, are the most effective at getting money into solutions at the ground level. And uh, I'm very confident that whatever mechanism we can come up with, we'll make it worthwhile. Montreal Mayor Plant cut right to the crux of the issue though. Municipalities want to partner with both the federal and provincial governments, and they want to stop being looked down upon. So maybe to give the example of the of Montreal and Quebec, so we've started this uh, fiscality summit. So on the table, there's eco fiscality me measures that we are willing to talk about with uh, uh, citizens in Montreal, but to bring it also at the provincial level. And we are working with uh, uh, we have a, a, a fiscal pact with the province of Quebec, where we were able to gain half a point of the growth from the uh, provincial tax and. That is interesting, and that is good. So if we're able to do something like that in Quebec, I feel like we can always bring those ideas at the federal level. One element I, I want to put emphasis on is when we say we want to work in partnership, um, uh, Mr. Savage is right, it's about accountability, but partnership also means cutting the red tape and trusting us as partners. So how do we find this flexibility of having more revenues that make sense so we can fill the gaps or at least be, be supportive to our population? Yes, let's look at the mechanism, but how about we work from the, the, the starting point is how do they envision us? How do they see us? And how do they want to work with us? Because we know what we want. We want to be partners. 
with the provincial and the federal, but it is for them to answer this question. How do they see us? Because the population or local people are counting on the city to find solution, whatever it is. We're on the front line. So I, my question for, for them is both levels. How do they see us and how can we better partner together? Mayor Savage concluded by saying that the Canadians who elected him are the same Canadians who have elected both the provincial and federal governments. So it's time to work together for all Canadians. The other thing, a lot of provincial governments and the federal government are very concerned about health care, which is an important issue. Nova Scotia, for example, health care is the preeminent issue. You know, the biggest uh, guarantor of poor health is lack of housing. Um, mental health and addictions are so wrapped up in the housing issue. And so I don't think you can just compartmentalize something and say it's a health issue, it's not a homeless issue, because they're so intertwined. And the last thing I'll say in terms of a new fiscal framework and working with the other orders of government is we have to get elected too. Right? We go to the same people you do to get elected. So, you know, we're prepared to uh, be a partner. If you give us uh, the relationship uh, that, that we need, it will work for the citizens of Canada. <laughs> I want to take a moment and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in and being part of this conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes we have coming. We have some amazing guests lined up, and we can't wait to share their stories with you. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to grow and produce more high-quality content like you saw today. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes below. Now, don't forget to also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. Until then, remember, just keep talking.